Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm in Malta on holiday at the moment and today I've taken a day trip to the island of Gozo. Now we're actually in Victoria which is the capital and we're in the citadel at the moment exploring around. And you can see all these kind of yellowish blocks around me. Now these are actually limestone and they're, ma they're making up the floor, the walls, the building, they are all over the place. Now let's go back a little bit. So the rock strata of Gozo and Malta is predominantly sedimentary. Now it's a sea floor that has actually come to the surface from about 30 million years ago. So these blocks, being 30 million years old and from a seafloor, are loaded with shelly fossils. So if we take a closer look, we can actually see bivalves, brachypods, echinoids, can't pronounce my fossils today, um, all over the place, and they are just waiting to be found. So we can go take an explore around, but they use these blocks for every sort of construction you can imagine, and they are locally sourced. So it's really spectacular to see, and you can see behind me the quantity we're talking about. They are everywhere, making up the buildings, making up the walls, making up the floors, the stairs. They are all made up of these big yellowish limestone blocks that are full of fossils. So let's go check them out. If we take a look around the walls of the citadel, we can see shelly fragments everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean literally everywhere. They are so abundant that pretty much every block you look closely at contains some sort of fossil. There are also huge quantities of echinoids in some of the blocks. It appears they have accumulated together, which may have something to do with the currents on the seafloor at the time when the creatures died, causing them all to pile together like this. Now most of the echinoids visible are in cross section, but here you can see a fabulous top down view showcasing the beautiful symmetry of one of them. Some of the softer limestone blocks are easily weathered, creating this honeycomb texture appearance that you can see in the walls here. Now as beautiful as this is, it is something that needs to be taken into account when choosing what type of limestone to use for building stones, as some varieties are a lot more hardy than others. The Maltese archipelago is located in the central Mediterranean between Sicily and the North African coast. It is one of the smallest in the world with an area of only 316 square kilometres. This being said, it is one of the densest, however, with over 400,000 residents. So there are five islands in total, but only three are inhabited, and these consist of Malta, Gozo and Camino. Now I could talk a lot about the history, culture and tourism of Malta, but today we're going to focus just on its geology and more specifically its unique stone resource consisting of this golden limestone. The islands are composed purely of sedimentary rocks and they were once a sea floor that has since been uplifted. These sedimentary rocks are made up of two main types of limestone called globigerina and coralline limestones. Now these have been used as building materials since the prehistoric times. Limestone is the main, if not only exploitable mineral resource that the Maltese islands have to offer and lucky for them, they have a lot of it. They have been quarrying their limestone reserves to use in construction and the famous golden shoe of Malta's buildings is down to this iconic yellow limestone known as Globigerina limestone. This is the softer of the two types commonly quarried. Globigerina limestone is very easily cut, within reason and with the right tools of course. And it can be carved and shaped making it perfect for interior spaces and decoration. So the name Globigerina limestone comes from the foraminifera called Globigerina. Now this is a very tiny crustacean, which is what the rock is majorly composed of, along with other small calcium carbonate shells of marine plankton. So if we take a microscope, magnify this rock a lot, we would see something like this, and you can see all these tiny little shells that the rock is actually composed of. The other limestone type is called coralline. This is also widely used on the islands, but less exploited than the Globigerina type. This limestone is harder than Globigerina and is typically used for the external walls of buildings. Here is a geological map which was newly updated in 2021 by Malta's Continental Shelf Department. 
This may look pretty to some, scary to others, but I will explain it for you guys. So the brown, orange and beige areas are Globigerina limestone. Then the pink, purples and green areas are a mixture of the lower and upper coralline limestone. And then the blue areas are the blue clay formation. So we can see how these strata correlate with one another using a stratigraphy log. And in this case, the youngest rocks are on the top, oldest at the bottom, which is the usual case, as long as there hasn't been any crazy amounts of tectonics overturning them. So that's a very quick summary of the geology you can experience on Malta. So if you've been thinking about visiting, I thoroughly recommend you do. And hopefully next time you go, you'll know a little bit more about the rocks. Thanks for watching.